Jesus, Lord, to me. 
that was from the Adoramus Hymnal, from their Christmas section, number, beginning with number 320. That was from Ignatius Press, San Francisco, 1997. And from the CD disc set that came with the, the uh, hymnal, and that was disc number two, beginning with number 35 and going to number 30, to, to number 55. The first stanzas of each. The meditation from Magnificat found on the bottom of page 123, the Saturday after Epiphany. Like the Baptist, we rejoice greatly at the bridegroom's voice because it is the voice of, of the true God and eternal life. Even if the whole world is under the power of the evil one, we know that we belong to God by our confidence we have in the forgiveness of our sins. In his mercy, Jesus even gives us a solution for such things as deadly sin, the sacrament of confession. Whenever we decrease by humbling ourselves in that sacred tribunal, our identity in Christ increases. Today is Saturday the 9th of January, the Saturday after Epiphany, the uh, Saturday in Christmas time. And the readings in the Magnificat begin on page 124. And if you have the missalette that we passed out at Holy Family in Rockland and are still available, the antiphons can be found on page 136, on page 136, for Saturday, January 9th, Christmas weekday. From Galatians 4, 4 through 5. God sent his son, born of a woman, so that we might receive adoption as children. God sent his son, born of a woman, so that we might receive adoption as children. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. This Mass is being celebrated for George Lannan. Eternal rest grant to George, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are eternal God, yet you became fully human, helpless in the womb of the Virgin, and in the manger at Bethlehem. You call us to rejoice in the power of forgiveness. 
you bring true peace down to us from heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are true God and true man, a light that shines upon us, the Lord born for us. You will be called Wonderful God, Prince of Peace, Father of the ages to come. And your kingdom will never end. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the child born for us, the son given to us. The scepter of power rests upon your shoulder, and your name will be called messenger of great counsel. And you will come in glory to judge the living of the dead. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who through your only begotten Son have made us a new creation for yourself, grant, we pray, that by your grace we may be found in the likeness of him in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah, the second chapter, the third and fourth verses, and it can be found on page 42 in the Magnifica. Come, let us climb the Lord's mountain to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may instruct us in his ways, and we may walk in his paths. For from Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between nations and impose terms on many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. One nation shall not raise the sword against another, nor shall they train for war again. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is from Psalm 149 and can be found on page 125 in the Magnificat. The refrain, the Lord takes delight in his people. The Lord takes delight in his people. Sing to the Lord a new song of praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let them praise his name in the festive dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord loves his people, and he adorns the lowly with victory. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let the faithful exalt in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their couches. Let high, the high praises of God be in their throats. This is the glory of all his faithful. Alleluia. The Lord takes delight in his people. A reading from the first letter of St. John, from the fifth chapter, the 14th to the 21st verses. Beloved, we have this confidence in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. And if we know that he hears us in regard to whatever we ask, we know that what we have asked him for is ours. If anyone sees his brother sinning, if the sin is not deadly, he should pray to God and he will give him life. This is only for those whose sin is not deadly. 
there is such a thing as deadly sin, about which I do not say that you should pray. All wrongdoing is sin, but there is sin that is not deadly. We know that anyone begotten by God does not sin, but the one begotten by God he protects, and the evil one cannot touch him. We know that we belong to God, and the whole world is under the power of the evil one. We also know that the Son of God has come, and has given us discernment to know the one who is true. And we are in the one who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Children, be on your guard against idols. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, ah, alleluia, 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 alleluia. The people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. And on those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death, light has risen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. from the Gospel of John, the third chapter, from the 22nd through the 30th verses. Jesus and his disciples went into the region of Judea, where he spent some time with them baptizing. John was also baptizing in Anon, near Salim because there was an abundance of water there, and people came to be baptized, for John had not yet been imprisoned. Now a dispute arose between the disciples of John and a Jew about ceremonial washings. So they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, the one who was with you across the Jordan, to whom you testified, here he is baptizing, and everyone is coming to him. John answered and said, No one can receive anything except that which has been given from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said that I am not the Christ, but that I was sent before him. The one who has the bride is the bridegroom. The best man, who stands and listens for him, rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. So this joy of mine has been made complete. He must increase, and I must decrease. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the reasons Christmas is on the 25th of December because uh, the scripture doesn't tell us the date of Jesus' birth. And some have tried to figure out the time of the year, where the shepherds were had their flocks in the fields at night, and that would be it, maybe at the lambing time. But this, there are all sorts of different speculations about it. But one of the reasons why December 25th was chosen 
apart from it was already a festival and they didn't want people uh, being drawn off into a pagan uh, observances and worship but to have uh, Christian observances and worship at that time. One of the reasons was that John the Baptist, we're told in the Gospel of Luke, is six months, was conceived six months before Jesus was. For the angel says, for your cousin Elizabeth is now in her sixth month at the time of Jesus' conception, his virginal miraculous conception. At the fiat, let it be of Mary. And so John said, I must decrease and he must increase. And so John's day is put right after the longest day of the year in June. So it's June, it was the 24th that John's day is. And when the days begin at first imperceptibly, but then noticeably to get a little shorter. And Jesus, six months from that, is December 24th, 25th. And the days are imperceptibly beginning at first to get longer and then noticeably. So the days, you can begin to notice the days are starting to get longer a few days after the uh, winter solstice. And so that's one of the reasons we have Christmas at the time we do. Then there are many reasons why. And and and, uh, and yesterday people said, well, yeah, other people have Christmas at different times. Well, actually, the old calendar Christmas, the Julian Christmas, which uh, the West used to have. Uh, all of the West used to have until the uh, later 16th century. Uh, they were following the, the Julian calendar, but and that was 13 days. Now it's 13 days off. Then it was 10 days off. So then it was changed. And people were very upset in October when they uh, suddenly the day they lost 10 days. And the Protestants wouldn't do it because it was sponsored by the, this, the astronomy used for this and the change of the calendar was sponsored by the Pope, Pope Gregory at the time. So that's why we call the calendar the, the Gregorian calendar. And the other one was done under the sponsorship of Julius Caesar uh, 1,500 years before, and that's why it's called the Julian calendar. But no, it's not. They're not having it on January seventh. They're having it on Julian calendar, December twenty fifth. So there. Well, anyway, John could have inflated his ego. He could have said, um, "Yeah, I'm the, I'm the Christ," and and he would have had all sorts of people come to him, or he could have not answered that. He could have said, well, uh, signs will tell and, and uh, time will tell. And he could have uh, basked in the vast celebrity that that would have been. But instead, he said, I must decrease, he must increase. And that has, to, uh, and he's talking about Jesus. He pointed to Jesus. Jesus is the Lamb of God. The, and he, he compared himself to the best man. And a, a, the the first groomsman for the bridegroom, he said, "No, the bridegroom gets the bride, which is the church, uh, of, and the imagery of Saint Paul later on. The bridegroom gets the bride, and also the imagery of Saint John in the Book of Revelation. 
The bridegroom gets the bride, not the best man. And in, in spite of some Hallmark movies, the and he said, and the bride, the best man is happy about this. He stands and listens for him and rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. So this joy of mine has been made complete. He must increase. I must decrease. Oh, and he, he said this as John's disciples were saying, well, this new guy is cutting into our market. There are people, the, all, everybody's going off to him now. And so we're going to be put out of business in our, uh, our baptizing uh, thing here. But instead of uh, showing resentment, St. John shows joy. And this is the great humility that John the Baptist has. Humility is a virtue much uh, denigrated in our uh, egotistic culture. But it is crucial. If you want to be happy for the rest of your life, never make a pretty woman your wife. No, no, that's not it. If you want to be happy for the rest of your life, cultivate the virtues and begin with humility. Humility is the unconquerable virtue, someone once said, by Satan. Satan wants to get you very much, but he doesn't want to waste his energy. He wants to use you to get you into his grasp. He wants to get you to do mortal sins. And 1 John, here in the fifth chapter, tells us that there are mortal sins, that you can lose your salvation. You don't lose your salvation like your car keys. It's not an accident. You have to intend this. A, a, for a grave matter, a serious evil, really, to be a mortal sin. Mortal comes from the Latin word meaning deadly, which comes from the word dead. And so it kills you. Uh, rather, you commit suicide spiritually to use, continue to use that biological image by mortal sin. You need the serious matter, full consent to the will, and knowledge, enough knowledge to know that this really is seriously evil. That's what's going on. So if any of those things are missing, then it's not a mortal sin. It's still a sin, and the effects of it can still be as devastating uh, for others, or even in some ways for oneself. Uh, than if you had all of the qualifications for mortal sin there. So St. John tells us about that. He said, if anyone sees a brother sinning, if the sin is not deadly, he should pray to God and he will give him life. And that's the same for us. You know, our sins, our lesser sins, we should pray. Pray an act of contrition. Many of you know that. I know an older version. They keep changing it uh, for adding to this. And of course, I have the thee and thou version because uh, I was there uh, at the time of Henry VIII. No, I'm old, but I'm not that old. And it's good to say the act of contrition throughout the day. If you think of something, perhaps in your past, that you hadn't confessed or something like that, or you hadn't thought of a long time, or you thought nothing of it at the time. And now, as you've matured spiritually, you think of this thing, that this is, yeah, this, that wasn't good. My doing that, my saying that, my not doing that, that wasn't good. But don't beat yourself, either literally or emotionally, over that. Say the act of contrition. Say, I'm sorry. And contrition is sorrow for sin, not because I'm going to lose out on something, and not just for fear of hell, which is not a bad place to start, but not the best place to end in our relationship with God. 
Because perfect love casts out fear, as First John tells us. And we sh contrition is sorrow because we have, quote-unquote, hurt God, who, of course, cannot be hurt. That we've... Uh, uh, the phrase that was used when I was in was offended God, but I never liked that because that I always think of offended as uh, someone with a f fragile or inflated ego, and God uh, God's ego isn't like that. Uh, so it, we have offended against love. We've it's gone against love of uh, that we've hurt our relationship with God. Or that we've also, through sin, hurt other people and hurt ourselves. So uh, we should obviously seek to cultivate contrition and not just uh, say, well, oh, I don't want to go to hell, so I'll, I'll confess this sin and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Or just remorse. Remorse may be helpful for a moment to lead us to repentance and to contrition, but we shouldn't roll in it. We should let it go. Just let it go. Not easy emotionally. In fact, letting things go emotionally for many people is not easy. And so when God isn't judging us on our emotional response to things, but what we do with that emotional response, it's on our will especially, uh, uh, is our will cooperating with grace? And are we acting on that? Because we can uh, do it ourselves that we will to do a good, but we really are procrastinating. We never really want to do it. So we have to do that good if we're following the Lord. If that's the Lord's will for us, then we need to follow that. But there's sin that's deadly, that keeps you out of the state of heaven, that's spiritual suicide, that's uh, the, a passport to hell. There's that, and the serious sin. It has to be a serious matter. You know, you can't invent a mortal sin. I, the uh, Pope can't say, well, uh, wearing pink is now a mortal sin. Uh, or especially a combination of pink, yellow, and orange. We uh, that's out, uh, and it uh, you go to hell if you do that. No, th that cannot be done. Uh, that uh, so uh, there has to be it has to be a serious matter in this. But then there are lesser sins which Saint John talks about. He says there are some people who think every sin is 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 mortal. The, the uh, people who are tortured by scrupulosity, or some people with a, uh, a, a, a totally depraved uh, anthropology. That is, uh, the, uh, and that's not an insult to them, that's the term they use uh, for, uh, the, uh, uh, for that. Uh, and then they say, well, everything, every sin is mortal. Every sin is deadly. And they're all, all sins are equal. All sins are not equal. And even all mortal sins are equal. So he said, if you see your brother sinning and the sin is not deadly, he should pray to God and he will give him life. So, you know, pray, pray for that. We, that's why we have a penitential rite at the beginning of, of the Mass. And, uh, off, and, and it's an option there in, in, in Compline and at, at other times. And actually, in the Anglican tradition, and also in the uh, ordinary Anglican tradition in the Catholic Church, the uh, there's this uh, penitential rite at evening prayer, at morning prayer, as well as at Mass and at Compline. So, um, I think at Compline, in the Compline it is, but I digress. As you know, I do. That's the way my mind works. But uh, if the sin is not deadly, he should pray to God and he will give him life. This is only for those whose sin is not deadly. So if your sin is deadly, you really need to go to confession. 
You really need to receive the absolution that Jesus gave. And he went to his apostles and said, Whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven. Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven. So that absolution is that. So in mortal sin, we really need that. And if, such, like in the situations of the pandemic, like that, and you can't get out to confession, then cultivate a, a true, mature contrition and pray that act of contrition. And then go to confession as soon as you can in the midst of all of this. But then he says, this is only for those whose sin is not deadly. There is such a thing as deadly sin. There is mortal sin. There are some people who think all sins are basically uh, nothing, or at least all the sins that I could ever do. Your mortal sins are things that other people would do. I would never do a mortal sin. So, so if I do something that I might even label a mortal sin to another person, I will find try to find all these excuses for that. Rather than doing that, just admit it. Just confess it. Just turn it over to the Lord instead of trying to rationalize uh, this and try to excuse yourself. All wrongdoing is sin. But there is sin that is not deadly. And uh, that's called venial sin, from the uh, meaning a, a lesser, a lesser thing. It's still sin. And we shouldn't have the attitude, oh, that's just a venial sin. Uh, this, my habit of gossip, my habit of this, that, or the other thing. I know it's a sin. I know it's bad. And I know, mm, yeah, it does hurt people, but it doesn't really hurt them that much. So uh, uh, I'll just uh, go on. I'll just make sure I don't fall into mortal sin. Well, actually, if we cultivate the pathway of venial sin, that can be a downward path that can lead us into mortal sin. As we excuse venial sins, then we can end up excusing mortal sin. But, of course, we should not be scrupulous about this. We shouldn't treat everything as a mortal sin or everything as a sin. You know, every turn of your head, this, that, or the other thing. Uh, that's uh, rooted in a really disordered spirituality and a disordered, indeed, idolatrous view of God. And as John tells us at the end of this uh, reading here, children... Be on your guard against idols. So most of us are not going to run off and worship Chemosh uh, and think that uh, the spirit of the god is in this object, in this statue, <clears throat> trapped or visiting or whatever. Uh, where the classic idolatry, classic Eastern Mediterranean idolatry, <clears throat> most of us are not particularly tempted to. But... <clears throat> Putting anything in God's place, anything as the center of your life, that's idolatry. And if having a false image of God in your head is idolatry as well. So, all wrongdoing is sin, but there is sin that is not deadly. So let's turn to the Lord in the midst of all this, touch, being in God's grace. And trusting in the power of grace that St. John says, the one begotten of God, by God, he protects, and the evil one cannot touch him. If we cling to grace, if we, but we're still free to say, oh, I'm going to go off in that direction. So to, uh, we need this cultivation, of, especially of the cardinal virtues here, of prudence, of temperance, of courage in often resisting uh, temptation to evil. And justice. And justice here, the uh, seeking the very righteousness of God, indeed the very holiness of God. For, as John tells us, we are in the one who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. Because they're uh, both God, the Holy Spirit, as one God. He is the true God in the eternal life. 
And we have this confidence in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. He hears us. And also we're told, Jesus tells us, whatever you ask in my name, uh, you'll get. But uh, Jesus tells us, if you ask for the Holy Spirit, then that. Because I can ask now for uh, that I can win the lottery without even buying a ticket. Or that, uh, you know, I can get uh, a lifetime supply of marshmallow fluff or something like that without my ever having to, that it'll just show up here. Angels will come and bring it to me. Uh, uh, that is a childish prayer. And that's not going to happen. And But uh, the sad thing often is that we pray for the best things, things that are obviously the will of God, like world peace and all this stuff, and this doesn't happen. And this is because of the freedom of the will that people choose to embrace mortal sin rather than to embrace God. So to God be glory forever and ever. Amen. In this happy season of joy, even in the midst of sorrow and the strife and darkness of this world, we rejoice when the goodness and kindness of God our Savior has appeared. Let us then, dear brothers and sisters, humbly pour forth to him our prayers as we are united in the body of Christ, trusting not in our own works, but in his mercy. The response is, Lord, have mercy. For the church of God, that in integrity of faith, we may await and may welcome with joy him whom the Immaculate Virgin conceived by a word and wondrously brought to birth, uh, who was adored by the shepherds and the magi. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy for the progress and peace of the whole world, that what is given in time may become a reward in eternity. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy, for our government and civil authorities, and for all the governments and civil authorities of the world, for all the nations and peoples and races and ethnicities and groups, that they, they, our leaders may lead us in ever striving for the, for the advancement of peace, justice, freedom, equality, growth in virtue, and the protection and advancement of all human life, especially the most innocent, from conception throughout to natural death. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy for those oppressed by hunger, sickness, or loneliness, that through the mystery of the nativity and epiphany of Christ, they may find relief in both mind and body. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the families of our congregation, that receiving Christ, they may learn also to welcome him in the poor. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy for all the people in our lives, for our families, friends, enemies, co-workers, neighbors, associates, that they may know the grace that the Lord won for us by his incarnation, by his becoming a helpless baby, by his death and resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. that we may grow as people of prayer and that we may frequently make recourse to the sacrament of holy confession and absolution 
and that we may daily pray in contrition, in thanksgiving, in adoration of God alone, and in intercession for all people, that we may follow the example of the, of the Virgin Mary and Joseph, who gratefully received God incarnate into their lives. Let us commend the prayers of the faithful, of the needs and prayers and just intentions of all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship and prayer partnership with Mary of Nazareth, <coughs> the ever-Virgin, immaculate, <coughs> Mother of God, the Word incarnate, with Joseph, her chaste spouse and patron of the Universal Church, Patrick, patron of the Archdiocese of Boston, Batolf, patron of the Boston area, Saint Oh, I read the wrong saints yesterday, so I'll read the saints for, today, for yesterday. Uh, Dominica, George, Cosebite, Apollinaris, the apologist, bishop, Patiens of Metz, bishop, Lucian, Maximilian, and Julian, martyrs, Theophilus and Haladius, martyrs, Caterius, martyr, Eugenian of Otan, bishop and martyr, Atticus of Constantinople, bishop, Severinus <coughs> excuse me, of Noricum, abbot, Severinus of Naples, bishop, Ernad of Ulster, nun, Saint Maximus of Pavia, bishop, Frodobert, uh, abbot, Erhard of Ratisbon, Bishop, Albert of Cashel, Bishop, Morantus, Abbot, Gudula of Bru Brussel, Nun, Pega, Nun, Garibaldus, Bishop, Anthelm, Bishop, Wilson of Sherborne, Bishop and Monk, Lawrence Justiniani, Bishop, and all the saints. Let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to our one mediator, true God and true man, Jesus Christ, born for our salvation, our friend, our hope, our example, our source and hope. Jesus Christ, to you, O Lord. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. And let's pray the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, who were pleased to shine forth with new light through the coming of your only begotten Son. Grant, we pray, that just as he was pleased to share our bodily form through the childbearing of the Virgin Mary, so we too may one day merit to become companions in his kingdom of grace, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. humble spirit and contrite heart. May we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may your, our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father, May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that, through this offering, we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today, you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, Holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Eucharistic Prayer 2. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, George, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that we, he who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. May this mingle with the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us and receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ, bring me to everlasting life.
And let us pray our prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that, through this offering, we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, pour out in kindness his blessing upon you and make your hearts firm in faith, hope, and charity. Amen. And since all and all confidence you follow Christ, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in darkness. May God make you too a light for your brothers and sisters. Amen. And so, when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to him whom the Magi sought as they followed the star, and whom they found with great joy, the light from light, who is Christ. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Eternal rest grant to George, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Lord Jesus, you shed your precious blood for George, and for all our beloved deceased. So grant them eternal rest. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me, even if he dies, shall live. And whoever lives and has faith in me will never perish. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in the battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ, thy Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may, by his passion and cross, be brought to the glory of his resurrection, through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. O sacred heart of Jesus, I place my trust in you. O sacred heart of Jesus, I place my trust in you. O sacred heart of Jesus, I place my trust in you. O Eucharistic Lord Jesus, I thank you that you have shared yourself with us 
in the Holy Eucharist. And grant that our thanksgiving may grow ever deeper. For you said, my flesh is food indeed, my blood is drink indeed. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. Grant, O oh Lord, that we may be open to all the graces you pour out through this most blessed sacrament. And grant that we may be channels of this grace to all we meet. For you are the Lamb of God and the bread of life. May you be ever adored here and in all the tabernacles and altars throughout the world and upon the majestic throne in heaven that you share equally with the Father and the Holy Spirit as one God forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, I believe and I profess that that which you have given us is truly your most true body and blood, that you are truly present, body, blood, soul, and divinity. And grant that we may ever profess this and proclaim your real presence throughout the world. And we ask this of the Father in your name. Amen. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Let's see who's waving here. Kate O'Neill, Christ is born, glorify him. Maureen Tibbetts, Christ is born, glorify him. Sheila Chambers over there in County Cork, Christ is born, glorify him. Maria Zona, Christ is born, glorify him. Maureen Tibbetts. Uh, no, Christ, no, if, if Jesus was conceived, Maureen was asking, wouldn't Jesus be only three months old, out which would be September, Jesus was born? Uh, no, if, you know, this, if the, uh, the three months, uh, but, it, 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 it would be in, the conception would be in, um, in March, March 25th, which also in a tradition is also traditionally the, uh, at tradition with the small t, that it, that was the time that Jesus uh, was con not only conceived, but was crucified on the same day. So it, it, the date of, of Jesus' birth is a tradition with the small t. And so uh, that would be, so that would be, the, so the nine months to December 25th would be from January 25th. So that's that, Maureen. Okay, Christ is born, glorify him. Judy Walling, Christ is born, glorify him. Carol McLeod, Christ is born, glorify him. Uh, people from Elizabeth Ann Seton Church, Christ is born, glorify him. Daniel Driscoll, Christ is born, glorify him. Patricia Kelleher, Christ is born, glorify him. Good name there, even if it's not O'Driscoll. Christ is born, glorify him. And as we prepare to celebrate the baptism of the Lord, when Jesus inaugurates his public ministry, and then before that goes into the time of preparation, of prayer and fasting and uh, wrestling with the devil, uh, as Jacob wrestled with, with the angel before he went back to the Holy Land in that aspect of the ministry he had. So may we live in our baptismal promises. May we live renewed in baptismal grace. 
for baptism now saves us. Have a wonderful day filled with the wonders of the ordinary. For Christ is in our midst, he is and always will be. Bye now.